welcome to the Podunk Polymath, a podcast dedicated to the sentiments of the secular, sarcastic, screwed up Southern SJW and skeptic. I'm your host, Chris. Come on in. This is episode seven of the Podunk Polymath podcast. First of all, I would like to announce I have another patron. Thank you to Dalen for becoming my newest patron. I really appreciate it. I know you could give your money to other things such as, hell, anything, booze, hookers, I don't know, but you you decided to choose my show and I appreciate that. I was just on the streamathon with Atheist Nomads for the Leukemia Walkathon, I think it's a Leukemia Walk. I'm sorry, uh, I'll put the, uh, the link up in the show notes for their, their charity, uh, I believe they're doing a walk, uh, they had relatives that died of cancer, uh, lymphoma and leukemia, and they were doing a 24-hour streamathon, and I was on there briefly, I was supposed to be on there for an hour, but technical difficulties cut it short, that's okay, I was still happy to be on there anyway, and hopefully I'll be able to go on there and show Atheist Nomads soon so that'll be cool so go check out my little segment on there it's uh fairly innocuous not terribly funny but you know i mean i can't be super brilliant all the time this week on my little pre-ramble i kind of want to talk about the arrest of the officer the white woman officer who i don't even remember her name and i guess it doesn't really matter in the shooting death and terrence crusher she was charged with manslaughter, and there has been some interesting discussion dis- uh, going on about this. Um, there are some w- women who are complaining about misogyny because she was a woman that was charged. I put up an article talking about how it wasn't from one person's point of view. I personally don't think it was. Other women have been charged, or cops, or police officers everywhere, and I'm sure they've been charged with things before. We just don't know about it necessarily. It's one of those that pick up, you know, you get a bunch of different occurrences and you notice the hits but not the misses. That kind of fallacy. So we need to keep in mind that a black, another Another black man was killed by a police officer for no apparent reason. And it's just, it's, I, what else can you really say about it? So hopefully uh, I'm not overly optimistic. I'm a cynic and I've seen this play out too far, far too many times to trust anything substantive is going to come out of this, but you never know. Uh, I personally think that she'll get off with some light sentence, but it's a little, it's disappointing. At least she was charged, I guess. I mean, it's a small victory, I suppose. So keep, I'll be keeping an eye on that and posting updates on that story. And then, of course, the other story is uh, Keith Scott out of Charlotte, who was shot while he, well, police claimed that he pulled a gun on him or had something in his hand, something. The family was at, saw the tapes. The police finally made, made it available to them, but they refused to get released to the public however it they finally have caved only because i believe the girlfriend of keith has on her so has some sort of audio where she's saying that they planted a weapon or something and this has basically forced their hand and of course i don't know if you of course i'm sure you do know that charlotte there was basically unrest and riots and everything else going on there and of course there was, oh my God, there was a catcher for this, I don't remember, the Mariners maybe, he was a catcher, in the, a major league catcher, I don't remember his fucking name, doesn't really matter, but he tweeted out some racist shit about it, and he got suspended for the rest of the season because of it, which I was really actually quite happy about, to be honest with you. I mean, that kind of shit just goes to show that people, this people are racist and they just, <laughs> they covered up a lot of times, but it's, oh, it's still there. It's still plenty of it everywhere, lest any white people try to put their heads in the sand and surround themselves in their bubble of privilege. It's out there. Just because you're not seeing it doesn't mean it's not there. So, anyway, um, oh, and I wanted to mention that Emil King said the riots were the language of the unheard. And why he didn't necessarily condone them, he understood them. And so all those who are talking about rioting all these you know they code it in such a way but basically these black people rioting because they're you know they're not very good people and they're criminals or whatever 
I guess it's okay to go for white people to go riot, you know, when their football team loses or wins or whatever. I guess that's fine. But when it's for something for a purpose, you know, it's just uncalled for, I guess. I don't know. And even even so, there's always going to be people who break the law regardless in a, in a situation like that, regardless of who's involved. Whatever, it doesn't matter. People are going to find a reason to, to, to steal shit and to cause havoc. That's human nature. I'm sorry to tell you that. I'm sure the majority of those people who were protesting were peaceful protesters. But of course, once again, they concentrate on the troublemakers and try to use them as the, uh, the, the trying to indict the entire, the entire population upon one renegade group. So par for the course, black lives matter. And apparently not enough people are hearing that because Black Lives Matter don't matter to a lot of people, too many people, and I would say especially to many police officers, to be honest with you. So that's just my take on it. Of course, coming up, I have on the plaver a friend of mine that I've known for quite a while, so it's a pretty good conversation, pretty comfortable, and a lot of insights. So um, stick around for the plaver, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, this is Dan, Ryan, and Matt with the Godless Revolution podcast. We've had a lot of great guests on this show, such as Russell Glasser, Dan Harrell, Brian Fields, David Silverman, Doug Mesner, a.k.a. Lucian Greaves, and Joey Kirkman, whom we love a lot. We've also had a lot of really cool local guests. And we're a podcast that likes to fight for the separation of church and state and against anti-skepticism of all kinds. You should give us a listen, because if you don't, you're going to be really sad. Make your ears happy. Listen to the Godless Revolution podcast. I'm Dustin. And I'm Wesley. We host the Atheist Nomads podcast. We're godless geeks who take a skeptical look at politics, religion, science, technology, and history. We also interview leaders in the atheist, skeptic, and humanist community. Check us out at atheistnomads.com. That's atheistnomads.com. Welcome to the Blaffer here on the Podunk Polymath podcast. Kind of a last minute feeling, but he's not a last minute kind of guy. You may know him as Pastor Jay. He does the no cano the truth. I'm trying to do it phonetically, but you know, it's not supposed to be pronounced that way. And of course, yeah, he does his own music and you can find his music on a lot of other podcast, atheist podcasts, skeptical podcasts, because his music is just that good. I present to you my friend, Jason Como. How's it going, sir? It's going very well and thank you for the nice intro. Well, it's not unearned, sir. Uh, your music is pretty well known, like I said, and it is a lost state of mind. dot com. I'm plugging your shit for you already. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Even though it's supposed to wait till the end of the show, I don't care. I'm sure everybody knows your music. If they listen, they probably heard it uh, because it's on, like I said, different. Uh, I know it's on Solidor Skeptics. I don't know if Callie still uses it or not. I think she does. A couple other ones I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah. And, you know, and I'm always grateful, like insanely grateful to the people that uh, not only use my music for their podcast, but that listen to the music and and or um, listen to the podcast. It's just it's uh, it's pretty neat to know that, um, you know, what I what I sit down to do uh, in my studio. Um, it, it's pretty neat to know that, hey, I think this is cool. And then when I put it out there, other people think it's cool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm always I'm always grateful to the to my friends that um, appreciate what I do. So I brought you on. We had a little discussion earlier about this, uh, different kind of things, but basically kind of get the burnout sometimes on social media. Maybe it's, I think maybe social media is a little more prone to it, but this idea of not being able to disagree about shit and kind of get into these knockdown drag outs sometimes, whether, whatever group it be and whatever the subject may be. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the anonymity, when I'm, the anonymity so much is you're not face to face with somebody and there's a lot of times you can take tone you don't hear the tone is don't know what the tone is of the person and you don't know their fa- facial you know gestures or their body language or anything yeah and you talked to me about kind of just like bowing out because i have noticed that you haven't really been saying much on social media lately i wondered maybe if you were you know, if you've been kidnapped by aliens or what the fuck was going on, you know? Well, well, that did happen, um, but uh, that's not why I bowed out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, um, yeah, I guess, I guess to start, um, it, it, it's not a, it's not a spiteful thing, you know, it's not a, 
I favor one group of the, over the other, or I think this group of people are assholes or whatever. I just, um, um, and I, I also want to preface this by saying this is my issue. This isn't, you know, I'm not going to go out. I'm not trying to say that this is a problem within any community. This is everyone's doing it. It's just, you know, my observations and my reasons for, you know, why, why I backed out. And it could be the reasons, um, why a lot of people that I know have pretty much kept their mouth shut and just kind of backed out and decided to talk about other issues or not actually, no, not other issues, just other things that, that weren't issues that we talk about within let's say the atheist community. And so I don't want to come off as like the authority and everybody's a dick and you know, this, you know, I, that's basically. (laughs) Right. I mean, I mean, I guess sometimes you can get caught in the weeds of things and you really, it's really hard to kind of, I don't know, it gets kind of old after a while. I mean, I can understand that. I mean, I know coming from where I'm coming from, I see social justice stuff posted on, and I post it myself, I know that, a lot. And I, I kind of, lately, I've kind of been like, wow, this is just kind of, sometimes you just want to take a step back and kind of take a break. And, like, that's, I post, like, yeah, I'll post news stories about shit that I think is, are important. But then I'll post, like, fucking cat videos and shit. Right. Well, and I, to- I talked to you about this to you earlier, but, and I will say, this isn't just... This isn't just an atheist community thing. I mean, it seems like it is to a lot of people because a lot of people, like for me, 99% of my friends that I interact with either personally or through social media are atheists. So it's easy to say this is an atheist community thing. But, you know, like I told you before through voice messaging, um, back, I forget what year it was, way back in the day, uh, there's a couple, a couple things actually. Um, there's this thing where, once something becomes big, people will latch on to that thing. You know, back in the day when comic books started to use black and white versus color because it was cheaper, uh, that became a thing and everybody started doing it, which turned a lot of people away at the time. Um, the same thing applies like right now I'm, um, I'm part of the audio drama community. And while the audio drama community is still, you know, podcast wise, while it's still sort of relatively, can you hear that dog? Yeah, it's fine. Come on. Okay. Well, it's still relatively kind of, you know, it's, it's not like a big thing in podcasting. Um, what I'm starting to notice, myself included, is everyone is, you know, doing audio drama and it gets to the point where it's not a specialized thing anymore. Like when I first started listening to it, Welcome to Night Vale was like the biggest thing. And then as I got into it, um, everybody pretty much that I knew started doing it. And even with the audio drama community, I get burnt out. And so... I think for me, I get tired of the repetitiveness. And, and unfortunately, what, what ends up happening, in, in my opinion, and, and what happens to me is whether it's audio drama, and I, I use those two examples just as a kind of as a, not an analogy, but as a way to kind of explain where I'm going with this. Um, what ends up happening for me is, is when I, you know, if I'm scrolling through, let's say Facebook or Twitter, or, you know, even if I watch the news, if I see the same thing over and over again, even if that issue that's being discussed is in, is important, I I I tend to just shut down, and I and I'll just I'll end up, you know, like not turning on Facebook. I'll 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 just I'll sit in my room and either write a podcast or play video games or just interact with people because you know it's my choice because I don't I don't want to make my life full of the same thing over and over again, and that's for me that's what ends up happening. And again, I'm not trying to discredit, you know, podcasters that, you know, let's say do atheist podcasting. And I, I think it's great that people do that kind of stuff. But, you know, at some point when, when it, when it becomes, um, an everyday thing, man, it's easy to get overstimulated. At least for me, it is. And then I get to the point where all these friends that I have who talk about these things, I, it's like, I don't know how to talk to them anymore because they're talking about the same thing. And I'm like, Hey, do you like video games? Um, do you like the, you know, and I'm not saying I have a, a couple friends that I, I, I interact with on a daily basis that, you know, some of these subjects never come up and it's awesome. And so, and, 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 and to add to that, it, it's not just the overstimulation. That's again, like I've said before, that's my issue. That's not, uh, I'm not blaming anybody else for that. But the thing that I do get kind of frustrated at that I blame, human beings for is the you know like you said with the 
an anonymity. I can't even say that word, but being anonymous on the internet, pretty much, like, like people know who you are, but you can still type. You can, he can still be a keyboard warrior and type whatever you want. I know I've done it. I've lost friends because I've been an asshole on the internet because I was a lot more brave. Whereas if I, if I would have had a, you know, person to person conversation with these same people, things might have gone better. But what I've, what I've seen is, you know, even in the last month, just the garbage that, that gets spewed back and forth between people. And in some cases, unfortunately, you know, in some cases I, I can kind of see, I can kind of see it. I'm like, Oh, I, I see why this person did that. I see that. I, you know, I see why that person did that or why that person's upset. But you know, we're not doing ourselves any favors by act, by acting like a bunch of psychopaths and no disrespect to psychopaths out there. But <laughs> I, you know, it's like, I, I feel like the days of, of, a rational conversation are, are, are over with. It's like, you know, when I see somebody post an opinion, which is something I don't do anymore because, um, first of all, nobody wants to fucking hear my opinion. And second of all, um, uh, it, it opens me up, uh, to, to discussions that I just don't really feel like having, which is my prerogative. But, um, the problem is, is like when these, when, when you see these opinions get spouted from people, um, which is fine, uh, you end up having what start off to be somewhat decent discussions that start to turn into snarky level 100. And then people start acting like, like assholes, right? Which just defeats the entire purpose of the conversation. And nobody ever really walks away. I, I don't feel nobody really walks away having learned something. And by learning something, you don't have to necessarily change your views, but you can at least go, you know, I still disagree with you, but now I know a little bit more about why you think the way you do. Thank you for that. Now I can, at least understand it better. And now maybe next time I talk to an individual that I disagree with on that particular subject, maybe I can approach it differently because now I at least understand. And, you know, things like that, um, that I see, you know, that, that's a lot of the reasons why I just, I shut the fuck up. You know, I just, I got tired of it. And so I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, not talking on Facebook because I'm, you know, cause you're a dick. Well, you're a fucking dick, Jason. That's all. It is. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. No, it's just, I just have nothing to say. You know, I, I have nothing. I mean, I'll comment on people's stuff here and there. I'll respond to messages, but you know, I, I just feel like for me, it's, it's just better for me right now because I don't want to be, you know, hostile. I don't want to get angry. I don't want to, I want to be able to take a step back from all types of social media. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still like if I, you know, put out an episode of my podcast, I'll post it on my Facebook page and stuff, but I don't really try to promote myself that much. You know, I just, Put it out there. People want to hear it. They can hear it. But like, I just, I, I don't, I just don't want to be angry. So I think for me, I just, I took a step back, but this is what kind of started this whole conversation. Cause you know, there's a lot of mutual friends that we have that have these amazing podcasts that talk about these issues that need to be discussed. Um, that should be discussed to kind of make our world a better place. And I know I've said this a thousand times already, but again, I know this is my issue, but um, I fear that this is a lot of people's issue where, you know, some of the bad apples tend to kind of ruin it. So I get to the point where I hear the same rhetoric or the same type of rhetoric from all these different people. And the next thing you know, one of our friends will put out a very important podcast that should be listened to. And I step back and I see it. I'm like, you know what? You can just talk. Oh, I don't care. I don't. And I get to the point where I feel like I'm going crazy because I start to feel like, like, do I have emotions? Because I don't like I don't care anymore. And that's not the case. I obviously do care, but I, I, I feel like I've lost a lot of that flame. And, um, you know, just think, thinking about specifically our community as a whole, you know, looking down the future, I don't, I don't see things getting better and I don't see us carving a path as much as we have been or, or, or could be doing because I feel like a lot of people and myself included, we're not picking and choosing our battles wisely. And we're letting a lot of things get to us that I feel like it, it'd be more productive if we said, okay, that sucked that that happened, but let's just move on to this more important issue. And I know a lot of people will hear that and say, well, that's kind of a dickish thing to say. And I don't mean it to be, I don't mean to come off as, as saying, oh, fucking don't worry about it. Move on. I, I'm, I'm not trying to tell people not to have feelings. And I'm not trying to say like people should just get over it because that's not what I'm getting at. What I am saying is I feel like with a lot of the rhetoric that I'm seeing, I'm not saying to get over it. I'm, I'm saying to, you know, 
yeah, let it, it's going to affect, you know, whatever the issue is, it's going to affect you, but don't harp on it. Don't, don't keep it, don't keep getting on it because from someone like me who's looking at it from an outside point of view, it, it, it ends up discrediting you. You know, and to be fair, there are a lot of people who have recognized that that's the case and they've changed and they said, oh, fuck, maybe I won't like say those things. But and again, this isn't an attack on anybody. I'm not saying people are bad, but there's things that I've seen where I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like that, like that thing right there just made me care even less about the overall issue that you deal with because you chose to make something like that an issue. And again, I know that sounds such a dick thing to say, but. That's just how I process it. There's a couple of things I wanted to jump in real quick. There's a couple of things you said there I kind of wanted to react to or whatever. First of all, you mentioned that um, you kind of get overstimulated as far as the issues go and people saying the same stuff over and over again or whatever. Yeah. I mean, not everybody. Being an activist is a certain, that takes a certain sort of skill set, a certain type of personality. I don't think everybody is like that, or I don't think many people are like that, and that's okay. I don't think we should be, you should feel guilty for being human and for recognizing that sometimes you just need to step a step away. I mean, I know that, and it's even more difficult when you have a certain where you know, because I'm a straight white guy and I I can afford maybe to step away and not and ignore it for a minute. But there are people who, like transgender individuals, who are dying on a daily basis and can't, that's who they are. And yeah, so, I know. you know, stuff like, I, I, I don't want to minimize that at all. Well, you that's, what, that's, that's the part of me that feels guilty. That's why right. I say I feel guilty because, because I recognize those things. And it's a, it's a struggle that I have in my head because it's not just one of those things where I'm like, well, I don't care. Fuck you guys. You know, it's, it's not that at all. It's just the guilt comes from the fact that I'm starting to lose a lot of my, compa- not my compassion, my, my passion, uh, my vicarious passion, I guess, um, through a lot of these things because of the overstimulation. So that's where the guilt comes. Cause like I said, you and I both have mutual friends that are, you know, up shit creek without a paddle, you know, and, and they're in horrible situations that they did not choose to be in. That's just who those people are. And, and that's what I'm trying, and that's what I'm getting at. And that's where, um, you know, a few of my friends that I know have also kind of taken the path of, you know, we give up or just, we're just going to do other things and never talk about activism or atheism or, or whatever, because it's not to say that these people, myself included, don't care when it counts. And I, you know, it's, it's not that, you know, like if, if Callie Wright came up to me and was like, Hey, can you help me out with this? I would be there in a fucking heartbeat. You know, so it's not to say like, I'd be like, no, fuck you. I don't care. It's, it's not that at all. It's a, it's a struggle. And I told you before, it's a very complicated thing for me because, you know, a lot of it also is based on my attitude that day. Cause there are days where I wake up and, you know, I could, you know, be the nicest person in the world. And there's other days where I'm a monster and I'm horrible to be around and I hate everything and I just don't care. And so it's a very complicated thing for me, but I have noticed that overall regardless of my mood i'm having more of an apathetic not a not an active apathetic just kind of just a a general like eh, just fucking let's anybody want to watch a football game let's any you know like look can, can we do something else right now and and i think you know well that's what i was trying to get at is that not everybody is like that it has right. that that activist mindset or whatever. And you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't feel bad necessarily. And like you, you said, you, you should see my Facebook. Feed. <laughs> Cause well, and you're right. No, but you're right. No, in all seriousness though, you're right. No, not everyone uh, is like that. I agree. Keep going. Though. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's cool. I just, you know, people are built differently and I'm built for, di- for different things. Not everybody is going to be able to do and deal with, be able to deal with the same types of things. I mean, in the end, you've got, you've got to take care of you. Mm, you right. Know, when it comes right down to it, I mean, you could be concerned about other people or really concerned and really want to get involved in their struggle and everything else. But, but in the end, you've got to, you've got to do you. You've got to look after your own emotional well being. And I know there are plenty of people I, and probably the, <laughs> the majority of them have mental 
you know, their own mental things going on. I know I do. Yeah. You know, it, this community is full of, well, basket cases. I don't, that's probably not the best term to use, but. Yeah, I, I and, you know, to kind of just real quick to cut you off there, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a basket case, but I'm not the most stable when it comes to my, you know, my anger or whatever. And I, I'm a, I'm a generally nice person and I'm very, I try to be as passionate as possible, but sometimes it's very easy for me to just be a complete dick, but usually it's, it's a result of being provoked by something that's not even worth being provoked over. So like, you know, I think we're all, you know, we're all basket cases in some way or other. Um, yeah, go ahead. That was a horrible term. I really, sh- I just couldn't think of any. I thought it was a great term because it fit me. <laughs> I just try not to use terms like that or yeah. that can be considered ableist. And, and, and I know a lot of people, oh God, here we go, the ableist shit again. And the, the, well, the thing is, part of that is, and I said this on the podcast I was on, the Brainstorm podcast I was on not too long ago. I was like, you know, we're willing to give this consideration to other groups, LGBT groups, and women and feminism groups, why are not, I mean, why not take the next step to say, you know, if it's going to bother someone, why, and plus the fact, why can't you think of other ways to say shit? That just tell me, it tells me you don't want to think about it. You know, I've, I've heard both sides of the argument and I can even, to me, I, I think it's important that people actually, and this is what we're getting back to as far as being, being able to disagree on shit and seeing and empathy and seeing other people understanding why people don't necessarily well, agree. Well, this actually opens up a whole thing, a whole new thing that I haven't really heard discussed a lot. But again, I haven't really gotten myself involved in all these conversations. Um, you know, everyone, and, and this is a given, everyone knows what I'm about to say, but, you know, we all have our own sort of life story and we, we view reality and, and we also view how we, you know, how people treat us based on the things in our past. And so, you know, you're not the first person I've heard you know, uh, choose not to use a certain word or certain words. And I don't necessarily agree or disagree with that. You know, I, I'm not coming at this like, oh, that's stupid, blah, blah, blah. For me, cause I've heard, uh, I've heard Steve Scheib's, um, he used to do a, a segment called, I think it was like five or ten stupid things. And five stupid he, things. Yeah. And he decided for, as far as I know, I don't know if he went through with it, but I remember a video where he said he was going to, or yeah. somebody said he was, he, he was, was going to stop using that word. He was on a now, Cali show. The last yeah. Time, talking. Now for now for me, okay. So my, there, it's, I won't even say my issue with that because there isn't an issue. I don't care. I don't. You know, if you don't want to use the word, fine. Like I don't. Doesn't affect me. But, but I think for me, the only thing that kind of makes me tilt my head to things like that. It's not that I don't understand why people don't want to use certain words. It's that. And I'm sure everyone has a sob story growing up. You know, we all have one. And, and, uh, I have my own. Other people have theirs. Um, I think, I don't, and I, I'm, I gotta, I'm trying to find a way to say this, like, the best way I can. Um, I think with, with my experiences as a child and my experiences growing up and, um, you know, the schools that I was in, I, I, I learned to tune out, uh, not, and not in all, not always, but I've learned for the most part to tune out when, you know, whenever somebody either inactively or actively tries to hurt my feelings, I've, I've learned to not really, especially when it comes to names. Um, like my, this is going to sound stupid, but my name is Jason Camo. My nickname is Jay. And a lot of people mispronounce my last name as Como. So all through elementary school and high school, it was even in the Marine Corps, it was Jay Como, the gay homo. Um, you know, and at the time when... I guess I was more bigoted. I'm not bigoted now because I don't, you can call me that. It won't affaze me. But back then it, you know, it, it, it bothered me for a little bit. And so I just realized it was just a word, you know, and I think for me, um, I'm not saying I have tougher skin other, than other people because there are things that do bother me that affect me maybe, um, just as bad as other things affect other people. But when it comes to words, I just, I, I can't, I can't comprehend why a word would bother the people. I admit that I'm a straight white male. Um, I'll even, you know, I'll even go as far as say I'm privileged. Um, now I'm privileged. I wasn't so much growing up, but, but even with all that being said, it's, it's still hard for me to, 
to understand why somebody would stop using the word stupid. I'm not saying I disagree with it. I'm not saying Steve Shives is stupid for not using it. I'm not saying like, I'm not, there's no negative. It's just, I just have a hard time like understanding that. And so whenever, like, I, I mean, it's not to say I'm not going to actively go out and name call, but if I'm just carrying on with my own business and saying words and living life the best way I know how, and then, you know, if somebody does end up making a huge deal um, about something, it kind of just, it makes me, you know, it makes me tilt my head. I'm like, what? Like, um, you know, somebody, like, if I, if I, con- like, let's say I was going around work and I was constantly saying the word retard, right? And let's say I didn't know any better. But if somebody, like, were to say, hey, you know, you've been saying that word a lot. You know, I have a, I have a kid that's special needs. Can you, you know, can you chill out? Yeah, I have no problem with that because, you know, it's the approach that, you know, other people gave me. They, they knew that I didn't know that I was saying a stupid word. Um, and, you know, they gave me sort of, I guess, that respect. But when people tend to, you know, make a bigger deal out of things, that's where I, I'm kind of like, oh, my God, what the fuck's happening? Um, so, yeah, it's not it's not, a, it's not a disagreement. You know, I'm not saying, I don't know, it's just, it's hard for me to jump on that. It's hard for me to empathize with that that line of thought because when it comes to, to using words, I mean, I, I mean, of course, I make most of my, my you know, my podcast is me making fun of myself anyway. So I guess maybe for me, it's a lot more difficult. For people to get under my skin with things, so yeah, maybe it's harder for me. I I think that's where where my my issue is. I just I don't get it sometimes, you know. Well, but the thing is, you're, you're sitting there and you're thinking about it though. That's the whole thing. I think anybody could understand where you're coming from. You know what I'm saying? Right. As long as they can tell that you're like trying, like, oh, yeah, I genuinely didn't know that this was going to upset, and you change, you know, change your behavior. That's, I think that's almost recent, and there's always going to be extremists on any, any spectrum, on any group or whatever. There's always going to be somebody who's going to police every fucking thing you do, okay? Yeah, but, that's, but, but here's a, oh, go ahead. I, I'm just saying, I mean, there's always either end of the spectrum. So I think what's most important, what I think is most important, I'm not speaking for, you know, I'm not like this, the official SJW spokesman, but what's important for me is that people just think about it and just realize that certain people, are, you know, are, are genuinely hurt by certain things. And that's not to say that you necessarily have to think every time, oh, God, I got to sit there and think about everything I say. You know, I, 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 th- I think the disconnect for a lot of people actually comes from the fact that, Let's say I said something that you were hurt by, right? A lot of the disconnect I feel like is when these people, let, let's say, let's say you were hurt by something I said. If I think about that and if I feel like you're mad at me for that, that's going to make me, it's going to turn me off. It's irrational, I know, but it's going to turn me off. But if you were to approach it like in general, I was hurt. That word hurts me. You're fine. You didn't hurt me, but that word hurts me. I would be able to approach that a lot better, but I feel through general general rhetoric that I see out there, I feel like a lot of people are pointing fingers and saying, you hurt my feelings versus that word hurts my feelings. You know, oh, so that's, I, a, that's, I, that's an interesting distinction. I hadn't really thought. And, and, I, and I, again, not everyone does that, but I think, cause I, cause that's the thing is like a lot of times it's like half and half. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, okay, fair enough. And other times I'm like, man, you're a fucking prick. Like nobody meant to hurt your feelings. And I think that's where, <laughs> a lot of the non SJWs get turned off because we feel as if, and I'm using these terms just to put a label on them. I'm not trying to divide anybody, but I feel like, you know, the SJWs again, for lack of a better term, um, can, can tend to come off as you as a group of non SJWs are bad people for doing this when that's not the case at all. And, and you know, with that being said though, I still say things that might not be, let's say, politically correct. I try to keep it in private. In fact, if I'm in line at a store and I'm around a person, like if I have my friend with me and there's kids in the line and my friend starts cussing, I'll, I I lose my shit because I don't want I don't want the kids hearing that. So I do I understand like there are things that you know for me there are things that I'm going to say in private to people that I'm not going to say in public. And so it's not like a lot of us that aren't you know again, lack of a better term, SJWs. It's not like a lot of us are sitting, you know, out here trying to hurt people's feelings. And I feel like the disconnect is if we, if from our side, um, I hate using those words because I'm not trying to make it sound like it's you versus you know, uh, us. Yeah, versus, cool. But but if if we could understand, you know, on our part, if we could understand that you're not mad at us versus you are just upset over the situation, 
I think it'd be a lot, a lot easier. It's, it's a lot about how you approach people with certain things. You know, um, I'm, I'm guilty of not following those rules too. There are times that there have been times that people have upset me and I've attacked them versus, a, versus attacking the, you know, what was said. And when I attack the person and say, you know, and, and in short say that they're bad for doing that, I don't get anything from that. They don't get anything from that. It ends up becoming a lost cause on both sides. But if I'm like, hey, so-and-so, you're cool, you got a good heart, but, you know, that thing that you said, kind of, uh, just kind of, it's just in general, I don't like that word, that tends to come off a lot easier, especially for someone like me. Because um, the, the fact is, is there, there are a lot of us out there that, you know, I'm not trying to say I'm like, I'm old school, like my dad is old school, like we're just like, we wear leather and smoke our Marlboros and kick cows and we're just like, blah, you know, but there is a level of that in me where I'm rough around the edges and I do have a humanistic caring attitude about me. But on the other hand, I'm also a very matter of fact, like, you know, I just, a lot of things don't bother me. And so it, it, it's, it's tough for me. It's a hard, it's hard for me to try to get on board with people. And, and in a way people have to kind of manipulate, uh, how they say things to me and how I think about things in order for me to go, Oh shit. Okay. That that's good. Um, I don't know if any of that made sense. Um, I'm trying my best to like explain that to where it, it makes sense. But, but what I see on both sides is I'm, um, you know, in, in regards to this situation, uh, this, this topic, I see a lot of blaming. I see a lot of anger and hostility and that shit never works. Cause, cause with me, even if I fuck up with something, uh, if even like I, and this is a flaw of mine too, but even if I did something wrong, if you approach me with any hostility about it, oh, it's game on motherfucker. Like it's, 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 I need to work on that more. But the fact is a lot of people don't realize that that's how they are and they're not willing to work on that. And so when you have these discussions going back and forth and you have one group that's angry because they were upset by something and you have another group that is like game on motherfucker because you're upset over something I think you're stupid. Nothing gets solved. And it's uh I mean not every problem's gonna be fixed and not everybody's gonna see you know, but it's just it's just this, this fucking war that's happening and I just sit back, man, and I'm, just, I'm watching all sides and I'm watching people get upset and I'm watching people act like dicks and I'm just like, man, this isn't nothing's nothing's changing. Why it's like why are we even having this fight anymore? And no. I under, completely understand what you're saying. And I think there's room for empathy on all sides. There's room for people. Some people seem to be wanting to find reasons to to get in a fight about shit sometimes. Yeah. They, yeah. They just want to, you know, uh, and I understand they have outrage and uh, they have anger. And they, they probably have legitimate re- reasons to be angry. And there's plenty right. of them. But yeah. the, the way... I think the way you you gain allies in any sense, in any movement, anywhere, is to try to come from the level of, you know, just personal interaction, personal empathy. Like, look, I know you probably didn't mean to, you know, say, you know, upset somebody, but this kind of, this word that you or whatever you, it kind of bothers me. And explain why. And I think the problem is a lot of people just don't want to put that effort into it. Well, it, it, well, there's another side of this too, actually. There, there's there is another side to this, and this is gonna. I hope th- I hope this makes sense. But back in um, back in 2011, I think 2010, 11, maybe 2012, I got a job out in Maryland working at a, a air station called Pax River, and. Um, you know, I was, I'm prior a Marine, uh, prior military. I was in the Marines from 99 to 04. And I didn't always have a, uh, I was a lot more, I guess a lot more emotional back then. I, I let a lot of, a lot more things get to me back then than I do now. You know, the Marines, I was fine. And then I had a period for about five years where I was a civilian and I just did my own thing. So I was out of the, the Marine Corps mentality for a long time. Well, when I got this job, I was back in with a bunch of Marines, uh, squids, Navy guys, and airmen, guys that were in the in the Air Force. And believe it or not, guys in the Air Force are like the best shit talkers on the planet. Like you, man, I don't care who you are, they're good. But I started this job, and I was there for a couple of years. 
in the first year, I was fucking miserable, dude. Because I was, I was so far out of the game. Even when I was in the Marine Corps, I wasn't like a true, true Marine. I was like, I was more of a fuck the system type of guy, you know? So, and I played the guitar a lot, so I didn't really interact with my buddy. So I wasn't a full on, like, jarhead, you know, young, dumb, and full of cum type. No. And, and so, when I got back into this this group, into this work environment, I wasn't prepared mentally for the shit talking that went on. And it took me a long time to figure it out. And so I spent a lot of times driving home angry, depressed, like just really upset. There was one guy in particular who, looking back now, he's nothing doesn't phase me one bit. But back at, and at the time, he, he, he really got under my skin. He just, you know, he decided on the first day he didn't want to like me. And he just, he fucking torched my brain, you know? And and so I had a hard time getting along with a, a few of the guys there. Um, and I had a hard time fitting in. And one day, and again, this kind of, this part of the story kind of reminds me of the, of, you know, this whole SJW versus non-SJW situation where you have, People that are rough and tough around the edges, so to speak, and you have other people that are easily offended. And I, I don't mean that as a slight. I'm not saying that as a as a bad thing. I'm just saying that's just how I see it. And I, I think I was like that, um, you know, back then where I was easily offended and I was, you know, amongst all these guys that were good guys. They were just good shit talkers, too. And so one day I was... I think I was out in the hangar and I was just really pissed off. And my, my friend Bobby um, came up to me and he's like, why do you let this shit get to you? And I was like, I don't know. And blah, blah. We had a conversation and he's like, you know, he's like, he's like, you realize if we realize like, if we knew that it didn't get to you, we wouldn't fuck with you as much. And it took a while, but a after a while I got to the point where it started off as me acting like it didn't fuck with me. I would just be like, whatever. And I would make fun of myself, which is why I'm really good at doing that now because I just it's easier. You're untouchable when you make fun of yourself, essentially. Um, you know, that's why my Pastor J YouTube channel, the Know the Truth YouTube channel, that's why I never nobody ever really fucked with us that much because you know, us meaning me and Jeremy and Jay, because um, you know, we made fun of ourselves. You can't make fun of somebody who's making fun of themselves. And so, you know, at first it started off as an act, and then it just kind of became my thing. You know, people I actually gained a lot more friends out of that and it turns out that most of those guys were just really fucking cool to be around because I just, you know, after a while, um, you just, you learn to let the little things not bother you and you kind of just joke along with it and the bigger things you deal with at another time. And, and that's one of the things that I observed, um, in this situation where it's like, I'm not saying to like, just brush everything off and to not let it get, you. you're going to get hurt. If people get hurt. That's just a, the, a part of life, and that sucks. But you can't, you can't walk around, in my opinion, and let everything get to you because you not only become more of a target to most of us who are rough around the edges, you actually become a victim to yourself because you allow some of the minor things to get to you to the point where it becomes part of your life. Um, and you know, for someone like me, I see that, and I see my friends and. You know, like I said before, on one hand, I get kind of burnt out with seeing this stuff. And on the other hand, I'm like, you know, the the anti-bully part of me is like, you know, I want to go up to these people and be like, get up on your feet, soldier. Let's fucking keep moving. Like, you know, that's where my, my brain kicks in. But then I realize a lot of these people don't want to, you know, maybe they don't, maybe they do. I don't know. But it's just it, it's it's tough for me to be in that environment because I know I see myself in a lot of this. And I see how I, you know, I see a lot of these things, how they can be a lot different. If, you know, if, I don't know, it's, it, I don't know if any of that story made sense, but that's just kind of how I view it. And that's also kind of how I've learned to deal with life. This is why a lot of things don't bother me. Things do bother me still. I still get upset by things, but me personally, I'm not saying this is for everybody, but if, if something does bother me, I tend to be more confined with my thoughts. I'll, I'll talk to Rachel or I'll talk to a few friends and I try to keep it out of the limelight. I try not to, to talk about it too much, but, um, I, but I think overall, a lot of things that would have bothered me in the past don't bother me anymore. In fact, anybody that's listened to this, if you went on, if you started calling me J. Como the gay homo, I'd probably make fun of myself with you, you know, because that's more fun than me letting that get to me. But again, 
that's me. I can't speak for everybody. And I know everyone's got a story. Everyone's got a different background and everybody's going through a lot more different shit than I am. So I don't want to make it seem like I don't understand that. I know people like Callie are in a far worse position than I am. So it's a lot harder for her, um, you know, to, to be in that, to, to be not on my level. That sounds, that's not a level thing, but you know what I mean? It's, it's harder for her to be, to have my mindset because again, I do recognize that there is a huge gap as far as the way we are treated in life and the way that we live life. And so, but some of these, you know, so you have these things where on the, um, on the SJW side, you know, if people would learn to, you know, push away some of these little things like words or if they would just go, you know what? That person said the same, fuck it. I don't give a fuck. I'll talk about it on my podcast and then we'll be done with it and we'll move on about bigger and better things. But on the other hand, if you have people who are non SJWs who were rough around the edges, if they could just think a little bit and maybe put a little bit of an effort in, what I would, what I think would happen is you'd see both sides start to come together because, and again, again, I'm using these terms as labels, not to divide anybody, but if the SJWs would say, oh, the non SJWs, it's the SJWs, are actually making an effort. Okay, they're cool. And then if the non SJWs look looked at the SJWs and said, "Oh, they're not getting pissed off about every little thing," I think that would close a lot of the gap. But for some reason, that ain't happening. And that's where you know the more that gap opens up, the more people like me and other people I know just kind of walk away. And decide, you know what? I'm gonna play the game Dark Souls and let that consume my life for a while because that seems to be a more manageable thing. It seems to be something that doesn't stress me out. You know, if, if for me, if I see a, uh, an individual, no matter what side of the fence they're on, if I see an individual not making an effort themselves, it makes it harder for me to want to help. And I'm not saying nobody's making an effort, but what I am saying is that I feel like a lot of the effort is being put into the wrong places. And so it just makes it harder for me to, to be on anybody's side. And so I kind of stand in the middle, and I know that's not a good position for anybody, but I don't really have another any other option. I'm just kind of in the middle and keep my mouth shut. And when people ask me my opinion, I give it. But I also try to put a shit ton of disclaimers in there so people understand that what I'm saying, I'm saying as neutral as possible. I'm saying it as a very... St- you know, dumb observer who isn't the brightest star. You know, I'm just another dude who's just observes and I'm willing to admit I'm wrong on a lot of things, but that's just what I see. You know, I understand what you're saying, man. And I think a lot of people, I mean, I don't know. A lot of what you say makes, it makes sense. It does make sense. If you just talk to people, I think that's part of the problem. I think people just don't talk to each other as just, people one-on-one i mean they they don't see well they don't see period that's the problem with social media and a lot of times yep. you don't actually see the person so it's kind of hard to it's easy to fucking uh just dehumanize them because you don't actually see them and it makes- absolutely dude I, and i'm guilty of that myself uh sometime last year i got into a stupid argument over a good friend of mine or with a good friend of mine over another stupid thing. And we we didn't talk to each other for a while. We recently became friends again. But I know that if her and I actually talked to each other, instead of typed it out on Facebook, there wouldn't have been an issue. We would have been able to hear each other. And I'm not trying to bash social media. You know, I'm not saying, oh, Facebook is evil. I mean, fuck, if I thought that, I wouldn't be on Facebook. But what I am saying is, you know, even for me, if, like, Rachel and I have this thing, and it sounds silly, but with almost every text we send each other, we, we put it, we put an LOL, even if there's nothing to LOL about. But what that does is it tells the other person it's a lighthearted thing, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe not every message, like, oh, if I, you know, like, like, for example, if she writes, how is your day? I'll write, good. And I'll put an exclamation point, like, ah, oh, good, you know? Because in my mind, I try to think, how can I write this to where it sounds like I'm happy and, you know, up, uppity? But I feel like with, with, with Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is, you know, and again, not to bash the, the, the media itself, but I feel like when these in-depth conversations happen, as soon as they start, I'm like, man, oh, this is going to go bad. And then you watch it and it goes really bad and people unfriend people. Like, and like, I, what do you mean? 
Like, okay, so there was a, I won't mention any names because I'm still friends with both these people and, you know, but there was, there was a situation maybe two months ago where one of my good friends, uh, his wife posted something on Facebook and somebody else, another lady responded to her post. And I saw why the original poster, um, we'll call her X, I guess. Uh, I understand where X was coming from, but why we'll call the the responder we'll call her why she responded and i could kind of see where she was coming from too but i feel like she maybe might not have had the whole story down or, or maybe didn't have the full effect of what x was trying to put forth and what it, what ended up happening is x and y got into this battle and it almost looked like to be a battle over who could kind of outsmart the other I don't think either of them realized it, and it's fine that they did that. It's not like a fault of theirs. It just it became this thing, and it got to the point where why the responder, it almost seemed as if she was trying to save face more than anything because X, the original poster, kept saying like, "No, this is what I meant," and it just went back and forth, back and forth, and and it got to the point where they blocked each other, and I could still see both of their Facebook pages, and they both, you know, you had X's friends backing her up, which is fine because that's what friends do, and he had wise friends backing her up. And in some cases, the friends kind of knew what the, what was happening, so I could see that. But in other cases, you had, in, in the case of Y, she was doing a lot of shit talking. X kind of was too, but it wasn't as bad. And um, it turned out that you had, you ended up having people commenting and defending Y who didn't even know what the fuck was happening. I've seen that a lot too. I've seen situations where Two people would get into a fight, and then like each side's friends will back them up. It, it's like a uh, it's like a dog like devotion to these people, to where they'll back their friends up. There's one person in particular that I know always does this, even without knowing all the information. I'm just like, what the fuck's happening here? But anyway, I I just feel like with all this bullshit that happened, um, and again, I'm friends with both of them. I, I see what happened. I saw what happened. I saw what was happening. I'm sure. That if there was a, a way that after X posted what she posted, if there was a way that Y could have contacted X via phone or even drove up to her house, they might have had a really good conversation. But it's hard. It's hard to do that in Facebook. I've been in arguments and debates while I'm at fucking work. And I go into work and I'm thinking about my next comment before that person even comments. <laughs> you know, I try not to do that before, but... That's not a good way to discuss ideas. Um, and I just, I've seen this so many times and it's like, we're, you know, if we're going to talk about the atheist community, which I don't really have anything good or bad to say, it's just a community of a bunch of people that don't believe in God. You know, we all know that. Um, we are, we're destroying each other. We're making ourselves look like idiots because of things like this. And, uh, a lot of times I sit here and I'm like, why can't we just let shit go? Because there's like 90% of the shit that I see posted on Facebook, I disagree with. And yeah, I could respond, but I don't because it's not a big deal. At the end of the day, I'm going to go home and not even remember that this person posted this thing. So I don't care anymore. And so I just feel like with a lot of this stuff, like in the case of X versus Y, did Y really have to say something? Because it really didn't pertain to her specifically. There was no need. Um I mean, she did it, so, you know, it's it's done, so there's no reason to, you know, I'm not judging her for it, but still, looking back, it's like, was it necessary? Because now, you know, the other problem, too, with social media is you have people that are, I'm friends with, like, like 80% of my friends I, I've never even talked to, and, which is fine, because I know I have a podcast and a YouTube channel, and people, like, follow which is fine, like, I don't judge people for that, I don't expect anybody to talk to me, I'm not that kind of person that, like, feels like... People owe me shit. You know, no, nobody owes me anything. So I don't feel like if you're friends with me on Facebook and you're just lurking, that's fine. Cool. Like, it's awesome. If you want to say hi, say hi. That'd be cool, too. But the problem, though, with the whole arguing aspect of things is it's very easy to be friends with somebody on Facebook. You post something, they disagree, and then there's a blocking that happens where that might not have happened necessarily if you were friends with that person. So it's just, just you know, yeah, it's just I, I feel like. There are times to be, you know, there, there are times to be a social justice warrior. There are times to be um, an activist. And there are also times to shut your fucking mouth. And I, I strongly believe that. Like, yes, we have the freedom of speech. We can talk. 
But man, we don't always have to exercise that. It's not, it's not mandatory that we have to exercise that. Well, that's, and that's, just, that's just anything though. I mean, you know, you're right, you're right. But my, but, but again, like, yes, there's a time to be an activist. There's a time to, to be a social justice warrior. There's a time to, to not say anything. But I feel like people aren't latching on to that third part. And people feel like they, they have to constantly say something. And I, and I just don't get that. I don't understand that. I used to be like that. But I work really hard at not doing that because it never did me any good. And I felt like, you know, it's, I can maintain more relationships without opening my mouth. Because we all have opinions and not everyone's going to agree. But for some reason, we live in a world where not agreeing means that that person's a bad person. I'm going to say so. I don't know if this probably is going to sound wise. I'm going to say it, see if it sounds wise or not. It's important to know when not to speak as much as it is when when it to speak. Yeah. I yep. mean, sometimes, yeah, you like you just shut the fuck. Sometimes, just shut your pie hole. Yeah. You know, just listen. I just I don't like. I mean, of course, as an ally, and that's a thing you're always see. Just listen. Don't fucking speak. You know, don't. If it's something that's not d- directly pertains to you, don't really say anything, unless it's something that's. But it just seems like, and this is something that I have noticed increasingly lately and i'll bring this up here is this this thing i call facebook thread dogpiling where yeah um and this is the only reason this bothers me so much is because it's happened to me before and you know this and in fact this uh, i initially started talking to you because of something that happened a couple of years ago right yeah so um it's when somebody in the and, and it's usually in a public thread or it's in the thread that a guy, a person who has a lot of friends or whatever will say something that is disagreeable to a lot of the other people in, in a group or whatever. And then it's just like a witch hunt. Every fucking, I mean, everybody in their grandma is just putting this guy, person down. You know, you yeah. look, you, I mean, this is before, of course, now you can, you know, how you can comment on specific comments. So yeah. there's, there's like the sub threads now. Before you couldn't do that, but now you've got the sub threads, and you look at them. It's like 175 comments uh, in one sub because they just piling on this one person. It's like, oh, you mean I can look cool by coming in and saying this person's a shithead, you know, and add my two cents and how how wrong this yeah. person is or whatever. I'm like, yeah. okay, if the person was wrong, fine. That's you know whatever. But do you need to come in there and just jump on the top of it or whatever? Well, and, but the thing is, that can, apl- that can apply to both parties. Like, you can apply the same thing to the person that posted that dissenting view. You know, did they have to comment? So that can go both ways, you know. Um, not to say that the person that posted the opposite view deserves that. I'm not saying they deserve that. But, you know, that's why that's what I'm getting back to, like, with me, like, you know, if I see a thread and I disagree with it, even if I know I might be right, I, I, I've been asking myself lately, do these people care about my opinion? You know, do they, do they ask for my opinion? And if my answer is no, or if I, or, or if no. I feel like, or if I feel like they wouldn't be receptive to it, I just go on to the next Facebook, you know. Well, that's just, that's post. a difference of personality though. I mean, some people, uh, yeah. some yeah. people just, are like that they just ooh. yeah yeah I, yeah i'm not saying that people shouldn't do that don't get me wrong i'm not saying that people need to stop doing this i'm just trying to give insight as to why like you know why things might be getting or have gotten out of control i'm not saying that people need to shut up i'm not saying that i'm just but saying isn't it isn't it more the medium isn't this a kind of a symptom of the medium itself isn't y- yeah Facebook? i mean in social yeah, media yeah yeah it is I can't, I'm not going to blame Facebook for that. I'm going to blame, yeah, I'm going to, yeah, like you said, I'm going to blame the medium. I'm going to blame, because it's not, Facebook doesn't make people post it. It's just, it's there. But yeah, it's how we use the medium. Um, And the same thing applies to Twitter and I'm sure other social media sites. So yeah, it's absolutely that. Um, And this goes back to what we talked about before. It's a very uh, impersonal thing and it's a lot easier for people to just talk block or yeah. Talk shit, basically. You would never yeah. say the shit you say on Facebook in person. Right. You get your ass beat half the time. I bet, you, I bet you if you and I had this conversation on Facebook right now versus talking to each other, you and I would have gotten into a fight somehow. Oh, I don't know no, how. I, I don't know how. No, 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 no. 
But there would have been a lot of questions, though, because it's a lot easier to say a lot more things. I mean, that's a given. So, yeah, I'm at, I'm, by the way, yeah, people, it is a personality thing. People do feel like they need to say thing, things. But my unwanted advice would be, you know, if you're going to put yourself out there like that, don't ever expect shit, you know. Always always let yourself be surprised when someone's actually open, you know, opened up to listen to you. And, now, and you also have to kind of gauge what the topic is about, you know. If, if it's about like, oh, I like Metallica, and someone else is like, I like Nickelback. Well, actually, if you write that, you can oh really lord. Right? <laughs> but 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 if it's that type of thing, and you give your opinion about something else, it's probably safe to say that sure, you know. But it, it, but if somebody says something that's an actual issue, and somebody posts like, if somebody says, I think we should have transgender bathrooms, and if you're one of those people that disagrees with that, if you post that, hey. More whatever, post it. Do whatever you want to do. I mean, I can tell you what to do, but don't expect people to be really on board with you, especially if you're going to post something like that in a thread where mo- of a majority of the people are, you know, pro LGBTQ, pro transgender, pro, you know, uh, transgender bathroom. So, like, yeah, just you know, know what you're up against. It's, uh, I don't know. I'm now I'm getting into trying to like tell people how to do shit, and that's not what I want to do. I'm not, you know, my that's not. My thing. I, well, I do what I do. That's just common fucking sense. If you come into a conversation, <laughs> you would think that. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. that's just me. I mean, if you're going to come into a conversation, that's like me walking to a biker bar and saying, "Hey, yeah. all you are a bunch of fucking stupid rednecks. What do you think of that, motherfuckers?" Yeah. You know, I, I don't know where I heard this from, <laughs> and this isn't an, <laughs> in a, this isn't an original thought. Um, I don't know where I got this from, but. It, it, it really struck a chord with me that, you know, one of the things they should teach kids in school is they should teach kids that it's okay to be wrong. It's not a bad thing if you're wrong. And I'll, and I, I'll, I'm happy to say that most of my friends are pretty good about that. But I think that can also lead to a lot of, you know, this impersonal, this war fighting that, that happens amongst our friends is this idea that, you know, people get embarrassed I mean, I still get embarrassed if I'm wrong. I, I'm, I'm working on it. I still, I'm better at it. I, I, at least I'm not combative, at least. Not uh, anymore. Like I, and I thank Rachel for a lot of that because she's helped me out so much with that kind of stuff. But How the fuck you know, is she with you? Anyway, go I ahead. have fucking no idea, man. I'm She's a saint and I'm a monster. She's fucking hot. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm like Paul Bunyan over no, here. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but, um... But no, uh, you know, that's the other thing is it's it's we need to kind of get out of this mindset that you know being wrong is a bad thing. But you know, I think like I said, a lot of us are getting are pretty good at that. But again, when it comes to this social medium, it, it's it's hard for people. So, but yeah, you know, that's just that's that's where kind of my angle has been. That's why I've kind of just you know usually when I post something, it's really off the wall, or usually it sounds like I wrote something when I was high as fuck or something, I don't know, but, um, you know, I try to be lighthearted. I try not to give opinions because I'm, that's not something for me. You know, I'd rather make people laugh and I'd rather just, you know, uh, that seems to be more my thing, you know? Well, it looks like we're kind of... Last, and last thing I'll say, I mean, I appreciate, I, I appreciate the people that do these things. I appreciate your podcast. I appreciate Callie's podcast. I appreciate a lot of the more comedic atheist podcasts. Um, you know, because I, I think there are a lot of people doing a lot of good work, and people are really trying hard because people really do care. So, again, like I said at the beginning of the show, this isn't a bash session. I'm not saying anybody's doing really anything wrong. It's just I just I just hope these people understand that a lot of their actions can sometimes push away the people that they need the most when it comes to social issues. And it's 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 a combination of maybe them not doing the right thing and also the people that are being pushed away not really handling it the right way because i'll admit that maybe i'm not handling it but the best way but the fact is it's an issue you know and it's uh you know uh, i don't know that's really all i have to say and that's all i gotta say about that okay <laughs> All right, well, why don't you uh, tell everybody where they can find your podcast and your music and all that good stuff. All right, well, my music is a alloststateofmind.com. Like I said at the beginning of the show, I have six or seven albums. Um, half the albums are instrumental. Half of them I sing. 
and well. they're all awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, the music <laughs> is definitely a lot darker. It's very because a lot of that music I wrote during really dark times of my life. I mean, I you know, like I said, I have my own issues. I don't really. You know, that's the really best kind that. of shit, though, right. man. That's the best uh, music's but, written. Yeah, but when you're going through that shit, man, it's tough. <laughs> but but um but yeah, I also have um I haven't really been active with videos, but I have a YouTube channel called uh, uh, Know the Truth. It's K O N W the T the T R U T. So it, it looks like it says Kano the Truth. And if you type it in YouTube and it asks you, did you yeah. mean to spell it the did correct you? way? No, no, spell it the wrong way. So spell the wrong but I, way. But I recently switched to podcasting, although it's been a couple of weeks since I put uh, an episode out. But I'm going to back in. I'm going to get back on it. But basically, the whole premise of the podcast is kind of a takeoff of the channel where, you know, Pastor Jay is the character and he's got a a little sidekick, a co-host named Baxter, and they run a a radio show out in China Lake, California. It's an audio drama though. Um, it's not meant to be religious or political or anything. It's two guys, you know, you'll start to kind of see throughout the series, Pastor Jay's losing his mind. Baxter really isn't real. He's just a figment of Pastor Jay's imagination. What the fuck, man? You're spoiling everything. No, you'll see. You'll see. I, I ain't spoiling shit because you'll see. You'll you'll see how things kind of progress. You can cut that part out if you want. I don't know. No, no. But, <laughs> but basically, that's the whole thing. Um, recently, uh, Baxter and Pastor Jay just got into this huge epic battle, and they were forced to move out of town. So right now, the season is in a mini season where Pastor Jay and Baxter are driving across the country. And, uh, you know, I, I do all the music for the podcast, so it, it's more of an audio drama than it is. It's also a, a slash live call-in show, even though it's not live. So you can call the number. I don't remember it now, but you can listen to it on the episodes where you call into the show and leave a voicemail. But I'll treat it as a live call, as if you're calling in live. And <laughs> so it gets, it, gets, it gets my friends to, like, it gives them a chance to interact, you know. But, yeah, that's kind of been my projects lately. Cool, man. Well, again, I thank you for coming in on such short notice and with through all the technical details, which Windows 10 has so delightfully provided me. <laughs> no problem, man. It was fun. I, I swear to fucking God, this this update happened, like, literally 20 minutes before the fucking thing aired or whatever. Because it, <laughs> it, it told me, it's like, okay, I'm going to update you in 20 minutes. Yeah, whatever. And I was in the middle of something. Next thing I know, the fucker's updating. So, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> I was like, yeah, thanks, asshole, for fucking my whole night up. But anyway, um, yeah, I encourage everybody to go listen to it. Uh, can know the truth. <laughs> yeah. The tr- if, if, the podcast if, is especially, it's very well produced. It's very well thought out. And it's a great storyline. Yeah. I, I really enjoy it. It's pretty funny. Yeah, just just go into the podcast expecting anything to happen, and and, and then you won't be surprised. Yeah, it's fucking like an ass trip or something. It's pretty. Yeah, cool. <laughs> that's pretty much that. That's probably the best way I've heard it described. It's pretty weird, man. So, and it's, <laughs> it's still it's funny and cool. So, y'all go check that shit out for sure, and go check out his music. Like you said, Lost State of Mind. Which I'll plug that shit all day long, cause that's, that's, now, I'll, I'll admit, not all of it's, it's, some of it, you know, the metal shit, I'm not necessarily, but, you know, that's the, fine. The post rock stuff or whatever, I like, kind of, I like, sort of like that kind of whatever. Well, that's yeah. a, that's a beauty of music and art is, you know, that some people like it, some people don't, and, like with any artist, you try to stay true to what you are, and, you know, people like it. You know, not everyone has to like it, and that's fine, you know. No, I like I, I like that. some, and I like just like it. But, you know, that's the way it goes, whatever. I can't. Yeah, I wish course. I could even produce any of it, to be honest with you. I'm jealous, so. Anyway. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for coming on again. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, you taking your time out to talk to me. No problem. Take it easy, man. All right, take it easy. That's going to do it for another episode of the Podunk Polymath Podcast. I want to thank Jason, Pastor Jay, for coming on and speaking with me this week. It was a lot of fun, and I think we came to a lot of great insights about a topic that not enough people are talking about, I think. Of course, you can find my podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Podunk Polymath, Twitter at Podunk Polymath, Email podunk.polymath at gmail.com. YouTube.com slash C slash the podunk polymath. 
Google Plus, plus.google.com slash the symbol for plus, the podunk polymath. If you want to become a Patreon, uh, become number three, member number three of the posse, come on on to patreon.com slash the podunk polymath. You come over to my page, you'll see that you can follow my blog through WordPress. You'll see my tweets if you like to see those. You can donate via PayPal, subscribe on our uh, an RSS feed. You can go to, we have on Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher, the buttons for those, and of course a button for the Patreon, recent posts, recent comments. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the music for this show is done by Dot Dot Dash. You can find their CDs at cdbaby.com slash cd slash dot dot dash and facebook.com slash dot hyphen dot hyphen dash hyphen six two nine five one four six one nine nine one. And of course, I still have the call in line six one five three seven eight popo seven six seven six. And I hope that's right. It's not three seven six. I don't know. I hope it's right. Nobody calls anyway. It's on the Facebook page under the about information so you can find it there if you're so inclined i would really like to get a uh a voicemail i think it'd be awesome and i want more reviews on itunes i know y'all can do it i know y'all are listening can i get le- at least like five maybe up well let's try let's let's make a goal of getting up to five that's a that's a a small goal a reachable goal i think yeah just go on to the itunes or stitcher go to stitcher you can leave a review there too i don't know about google play i guess you can i uh, I don't even know if anybody really uses Google Play much, so I'm not sure. But go leave me reviews. Uh, Money I don't really care as much about, but if you're so inclined, like I said, go to Patreon or donate on the page, thepodunkbollymath.com. So until next week, y'all take it easy, okay? Okay.